yeah, man, like those, those are interesting times, like working like those kind of shifts, you know, late shifts, morning shifts. Uh, and yeah, like definitely I, when I used to work in a package room and I'll go home with my dad, it's like the third shift would come in, right? The morning shift, all those guys would be like all tired as hell, you know, like they're just like grouchy and like they just whatever. They wouldn't all be the happiest people, but that's how it is, you know. They get used to it for yeah, yeah. 10, 20 yeah, years. Comes back to that, you know, that uh, no sleep, you know, going in at the day or at the night, you know, switching up your natural rhythm. It's like that's 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 like death, you know. Yeah, that's like how you kill yourself. I think you know. Let's talk about death. No, I'm just kidding. We we'll probably get into that later. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah, I mean, that's a topic for me. That personally, that I've, 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 you can say in a way I'm fortunate and unfortunate to experience. You know, I've seen a lot of family funerals and stuff like that in my life. Way too many that I should have, in my honest opinion, but that's just how life is. Yeah, yeah, talk about that. Like, what, because I've never actually, okay, well, that's not true. I've been to like one or two, but, um, I've never like experienced a close death. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, okay. Somebody that I, you know, know or something or that's part of my family, they haven't yeah, died yeah. yet. But, um, you know, like, tell me about that. Like, what, what's the, like, what's the death where it affected you and what you, you thought about that or, you know. Oh, man. I mean, the first one that ever affected me that kind of told me, how oh, this is life, was when my grandma died my, 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 on my dad's side when she passed away. I mean, she was older. She was already like in her 60s, 70s at that time. You know, she was like, she was very, very healthy. Like she could have lived, she, if she had, she had like, what's it called? Like respiratory problems, you know? Mm. But like that was the only main like problem. Like if she, if she didn't have that, she'd be alive right now, 100%. Like she was that like always really healthy, you know? But, yeah. Um, she died. And for most people in my family, they're like, okay, you know, it's like she was bound to die. You know, she was bound to, you know, you know, like that was going to happen. But for me as a kid, like I never, I never, she was like my first best friend, right? Like that was a person I was with all the time. You know, I used to hang out with her, watch Jerry Springer, you know, watch <laughs> cartoons, you know, watch movies with her. You know? Yeah. And it's like, I was like my, my first ever friend. And when she died, I was like the worst thing for me. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. It was really tough for me. But then a year after my other grandma passed away and all that stuff. So it was like a lot of deaths started coming in like years. Like uncle was passing away. Like my mom's or my family's cousins dying and stuff like that. Like. So then I, at, at one point, I just became very immune to it. Like, I'm very used to seeing that, you know, in a weird way. It's like, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm I wouldn't say I'm not scared of it, but it's like, I'm also like, not like, uh, like too stricken when I hear it, you know? And, if, and did you go like to the, to a funeral every oh, yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, every time for the most part. Yeah. I went to every funeral for the most part for those, my family members, of course, I've went to those and like, like other family members that I didn't know I've, you know, I couldn't visit, you know, but so, and how was that like what what was it how was that experience for oh uh, man it's like it's like for people that are like my like very close like family members it was very very surreal you know like especially those who died very suddenly in my family or those who died from the disease it's like you either see them go through that process and like they're slowly dying or like you see people that just die out all, all of a sudden it's like that's like now that they went from being a person to a body right it's like wow like now all these people are here to like, see them and gather in a way, it's, it's, it's also a great experience, you know, about how they say, like, death brings people closer together, right? I got a chance to see people I never saw in a while, like, cousins or whoever. Yeah. They all come together. So, that, that was pretty cool, but, like, also surreal, like, you know, if they're coming in for the wrong reason. Yeah. Not the right not, not the right time, you know? And it was, you know, it's, everyone's all gathered up, and, yeah, it was, like, it just, you know, the emotions affect you depending on, you know, how close you are to that person, right? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it is, it is, uh. You know, I'll, I'll tell people like, you know, it's, it's like I said before, it's, it's a fortunate and also unfortunate experience. It's fortunate because it, it gets, you get, you get a chance to see up, up close to see what life really is. Like, this is like, you know, you don't have a lot of things you know, in front of you. Like, it's not a guarantee that we have in this life, but also it's unfortunate because again, like it's death. It's not a thing they love to see, you know, but it's very interesting how that is, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I think like that's like one of the biggest fears for a lot of people, right? Like death or um, like fearing of no unknown, you know what I mean? Right. I think that's like a fear a lot of people have. And because um, like, you know, there's a lot of stories, there's a lot of, you know, um, history and, you know, science and all that stuff behind that. But yeah, 
to me, it's still like nobody really knows nobody what happens. Knows. Like, like there was a scientist back in like the 30s or 40s. He tried to like study death, right? Because he, he saw that, oh, he wanted to see if your body leaves the soul. I don't know if you ever saw that study before. But it's like he tried to leave his, like they try to see if your soul leaves your body. So like, um, what's it called? Like they they, they see that they think that you you get heavier before you die, like before you officially die. So that means that your soul is leaving your body, right? That was pretty inter- interesting. And the guy that studied that he actually died, no, no one has no idea what happened because he died. <laughs> it's like <laughs> he couldn't like prove anything right after that. But yeah, it is a topic that no one really knows, understands. Here in America, people love making movies about death a lot for some reason. It's a really, it's a really interesting topic for some reason. People love talking about, like especially yeah. like um, those like uh, movies like oh they saw like you know God or they saw the heavens or they saw you know afterlife and then then they come back to life. It's a very popular genre in this country for some reason, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now I mean that's you know everywhere. That's also like in. Um india and stuff like that and china and all that stuff you know like they have that like re re reincarnation or whatever you know i mean i don't know what's what's happening i don't think i think like nobody knows but right it's i think it's just a it's an interesting like thing you know because like if you think about it let's say you know nothing happens right let's say nothing happens yeah. you know what happens then for the rest of then there's like no time you know what i mean like yeah there's no concept of time anymore exactly exactly cuz you're just then like in darkness or i don't even know you know what i mean yeah. like it's just a difficult thing to explain <laughs> my dad said he heard an article once about some guy got in like an accident like a motorcycle crash and he was explaining to people, like, he died for a couple of minutes and came back to life. And he explained to people what happened. He's like, he just, like, he crashed and he just fell, like, into a deep sleep, you know. And he came back alive and, like, you know, you just died two minutes ago, right? It's like, what? What do you mean? I, like, I, like, no, you just died. He's like, oh, really? Oh, then I'm okay with dying then. Because it's like, if it's just like this, then there's no worry. Like, see, people say things like, oh, like, you know, they, they just, like, go to a deep sleep and that's it. They never wake up. You know, that's all it feels like. And if, if that's the case, that's interesting. But like I said, you and I will never know until it happens. It's kind of, you know, it's a, it's a very morbid topic, literally. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And that's like a a thing where a lot, it's like a lot of mystery behind it, you know, a lot of fascination. People want to, like, you know, mystify that. It's yeah. something that is like, you know out of this world or extraterrestrial experience you know what i mean stuff like that right but you know i don't i don't know and i don't really want to be the expert on that but yeah, you know yeah, it's yeah. like i think you should just try to you know live as if you know you're gonna die tomorrow right. you know just try to you know get yourself to the next day and you know try to yeah, man. Be better. So, yeah, man. Like how instead you, of like how we talked about before with Kobe, like how, for example, like he would always put that thought in his mind or like that concept, like oh, I'm gonna die young, I'm gonna die young. That's kind of crazy yeah. to have that thought and like it manifests itself to what it is. But you know, I, I kind of going back to what you're saying, it's like it's true. Like he lived every day like it was his last. Like he was able to make an impact in his 41 years of living or 40 years of living in his life, more than most people that live to 100 or 200 years old. Right? It's like. You know, yeah. you do with your time is matters matters the most. You know, and of course you can have yeah, times. definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I was gonna say. Of course, you have times where like you're not, you know, disciplined or you're lazy or you do stupid stuff, but that's part of life too. You know, it's part of that experience. Yeah, you need that. You know, you need that stuff, and where you can look back and be like, oh, you remember that time where I was, you know, like this, or yeah. I was being stupid or whatever then I can see, okay, that's, you know, something that I shouldn't do or I should, you know, change that way, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah and man. that's why, you know, it's it's a good thing. Like, you should be having, you know, you should be poor, you should be um, having, you know, bad days, you should be um, mentally having issues, you should be having physically issues, you know, I feel like you should have all those things. Yeah. Because when you get over them and you get like into the next phase or whatever, 
where it's not like that, then you can appreciate it, you know? Exactly. 100%, man. That's really true. But if you're always like, you are always rich or you're always um, whatever, fit or you're always, you know, super focused, you know, then yeah, that's your natural thing, you know? You're just in that state, but if for whatever reason that changes, like it does like a complete 180, then you're going to be like freaked out. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're watching Easy and Ibra TV.